Hello, people of the world. I think dirty mirrors are just a natural part of my existence. But hi, we're in LA. Mind the empty bookcase and this uh, mess that we have to get to eventually. But I've got some errands to run today. Fit breakdown, anybody? Yes, extra. I got the cost bag in black. And let me tell you all, mm, mm, that is a good bag. Tremendously good bag. I wore it yesterday all day. And yesterday is something I have to get to some other time. But yes, we got on black blazer, this like uh, green shirt, quite thin for good California standard. And these uh, cargo pants with a big book pocket. So we're doing that. And I'm running some errands today, so we got the Ajo Biajo duffel with our errands. Let's go. because reading is sexy and if you're not reading you're not sexy hi everybody welcome i'm back home in la and uh this is my bookshelf i promise i'll do a bookshelf tour eventually but here with some book updates i was on the plane and i was an idiot and didn't realize that after i put all of the books that I needed to read onto my Kindle that the books didn't like fully download. <laughs> so like I couldn't read them. I couldn't read all, uh, any of the books because the book that I did finish on the plane was A Breath of Life by Clarice Lispector. And let me tell you, that 10 hour flight felt so much more longer than 10 hours. Wow, where to begin? But it's Lispector in her dying days in the form of a male author. Does this sound familiar? For those of you who have read The Hour of the Star, which was written in the same time as A Breath of Life, she works with the same themes of this female character that is invented in the male narrator's mind. And Lispector, as man, has this really interesting side-by-side -side conversation with this character. It's not that they seem to be speaking to each other, but they're speaking adjacent to each other. So it's this idea of like the female character that's invented is in conversation yet not at the same time with its creator. And Lispector plays with different gender roles in trying to understand creation and creator and again essentially how art is created and where art is born and what is an artist very interesting to see that throughout all of her work she's still thinking about the same things 
And yeah, just some really, really good, good stuff. I think I liked this a lot more than Aquaviva because I feel like Aquaviva kind of plays with the same things, but it is shorter in form. But this definitely covers more of what the Spectre is or was thinking about when it comes to the relationship between art and artist and the birth of ideas. Once again, researched through and through, even to the last days of her life in A Breath of Life. There are some stellar quotes. Can I read them to you? Instead of saying my world, I say audaciously, the world depends on me. Because if I don't exist, the universe ceases within me. Could it be that abstraction begins after death? I reduce to a word, but what word represents me? I know one thing. I am not my name. My name belongs to those who call me. It is an eternal beginning, permanently interrupted by my awareness of beginning. I read that a kajillion kilometers up in the sky. How do you think I felt? Does writing exist in and of itself? No. It is merely the reflection of a thing that questions. I work with the unexpected. I write the way I do without knowing how and why. It's the fate of my voice. The timber of my voice is me. Writing is a query. It's this. Question mark. I don't know. There's just some... Ugh, just some gorgeous... Uh, I, like, I, I cannot stress enough that you must reread the specter novels after i finished i was like time to go back to the beginning also because like i i didn't have any books but that's a lie just wait one moment one last quote when i say i love you i am loving me in you <sighs> gorgeous stuff and this will be passed along to sophie in new york very excited to meet her and hand this off because it is such gorgeous gorgeous thoughts and ugh, inquiries of the world yeah a breath of life might might be a top 10 are we already forming a top 10 this early into 2023 who knows but i enjoyed this a lot and so after I finished that and went through my whole Kindle crisis, I decided to get a head start on Stoner by John Williams because I'm doing a buddy read with this with Seren. And it is so refreshing to get like an old fashioned story. I don't think I've read anything this old in a while. And it's not even that old. It's from the 19th. Okay. It's written, it was written in the 1960s, but it's set in the 1930s about stoner. You know, I mean, I thought this was gonna be about weed, not gonna lie, okay? But it's about this farm boy who goes into the world of academia and uh, reckons with what does it mean to be home? What does it mean to be in love? in this new world, in this world of academia, and yeah, like essentially what it means to leave home. What do you leave behind? What do you cultivate for yourself? And who are you? Who do you become? What do you learn in this new environment for yourself? I'm almost done. I'm shy of like 60 pages of way. And yeah, it's just really refreshing to read something that's so that feels so classic in the way that the book opens up with this just like this beautiful portrait of a boy becoming and is introduced to this idea of college and university and you know me coming back home in my childhood bedroom yeah it, it just it was just really fitting to just be like, why did I leave? Why did I go many miles away from home just to attend school? What did I learn at that school? Was I lonely? Did I have good company? 
Did I know what good company was? And yeah, all of those things are explored in Stoner. More ideas to come but because it does take some really interesting turns. And yeah, really cool. Oh my God, totally forgot to mention. Not too long ago, I read The Stillest Day by Josephine Hart, recommended to me by Benjamin. And if you haven't, you must read The Stillest Day. Such a fun companion piece to A Breath of Life because both sort of deal with this person within a person and how that person is excavated out of the body and is given a breath of life. And it's just, yeah, they're, they do the same things except The Stillest Day has more of a stronger narrative plot-wise, while this is really just a meditative adjacent conversation between birth of art and its artist and it's just really interesting to look at these pieces and really examine what is birth and what is nurture and how do we take care of these ideas and summonings within our body and yeah so if anyone is reading this please also take ben's rec and read the stillest day very, very interesting to read side by side. You know when they do like double features? Double lits. It should it should be a thing. I, like book pairings. It's should be a thing. Like book clubs should do like book pairings like that. I mean, but then again, who has time to read two books at once like that? As far as what to read next, I will be going to Atlanta slash New York in two weeks a week a week almost i don't know <laughs> but uh we have it's a soft spot in a trace erotically charged i don't think that's what it's called i think it's called nope that's not what it's called i think it's called soft spots <laughs> i will there will be a thing that will say that but i got this a while back at my favorite bookstore in hanamdong and it came in a set of three, and what you're meant to do is to read one copy and then give another copy to a friend. And it's essentially the same story, just different images and words rearranged in a way, but it's the same content, if you will. It's as if you perhaps have a social media feed that's quite similar to another person, and you're looking at those pictures and yeah, they like say the same thing. They're the same aesthetic and everything, but they're completely different people that you're following. But yeah, it's a series of pictures as well as words, interviews, essayic pieces um, about, I don't know, I really don't know. But on the back it says, reality is jarring. Reality can be fickle. I'm dumb and I only brought the one book with me because I'm traveling a lot with many books because I'm also doing a buddy read with Pato. We are going to do Miyako Kawakami's Breast and Eggs. Uh, I think I have an eight hour layover in Vegas. So I think this will be perfect to start. Yeah, and perhaps finish in Vegas. This one is a thick one. Breast and Eggs. And... I just watched Katie's video from Katie James, 23 for 2023, doing a buddy read of Sula by Toni Morrison. Uh, yeah, I, I hope to read more Morrison this year. And yeah, I have Tar Baby. I have Tar Baby over there and excited to get to that too. But yeah, Sula, Toni Morrison, going to do a buddy read with Katie. Excited to do this. And I don't have it yet. It's coming. I went to my favorite bookstore today to try and find it, but to no avail. But uh, Lucy by Jamaica Kincaid, uh, that's coming in the mail soon. And planning to do a buddy read with Renee from So I Read This Book. Yeah, so we've got, we are quite, quite ambitious. 
Yes, that's as far as book updates go. Be well, do good work, keep in touch. Let me tell you, leaving Korea to America, it was smooth. The only unsmooth thing was that my phone <laughs> decided to just go haywire. I don't know what happened, but like my phone was hot, perhaps because I was like switching between apps so much. But I mean, we are working with a 12 Pro Max. You would think that it would handle such sloppy social media switch switching but my phone went haywire and did this like emergency reset and i yeah couldn't use my phone i couldn't text my family i couldn't tell them like like i was getting ready to board and everything and yeah couldn't even when i got to lax i couldn't message them or anything and lax wi-fi is shit for some reason i couldn't even connect to it and so I pretty much spent my first day back, like just trying to get my phone fixed. I dropped it off at the Apple store. They said to wait like two hours. And then by the time I came back for my appointment and they're like, okay, yeah, here is what you need to do. And they like replaced some parts and I had to wait like another two hours. And then after that, I had to like update my phone and, re you know, transfer information back onto my phone and the night before i or like the day of i think i filmed some stuff uh, but it's all gone now it's all gone like let me tell you when people tell you when the little no notification tells you to upgrade your icloud storage you should probably do so i i lost a bit of footage but i think we're okay we're fine now the phone is fine after yeah after all that, it is fine. And yeah, sort of had my like real first day today. I got some greb at my favorite noodle Chinese donut restaurant. It was great, hit the spot. And then I got some shirts altered. And then, oh, I went with my brother to Buffalo Exchange to sell some clothes donate some clothes after that hung out with my other brother for a bit and then i went to get popcorn chicken and boba which i guess is not like a real <laughs> real first day back but it just felt good to like i don't know it, it was just good it was good to be back home and do some home things like normal things i think that's what i like most oh oh i'm so sorry i got banana coffee and my brother got a uh, pandan coffee before i went thrifting um uh, so close to Buffalo Exchange. And it was really good. I definitely want to go back for the Pandan coffee. That was so good. There have been like these really cute coffee places that have been opening up in like Westminster Garden Grove area. And yeah, they're doing some really fun stuff with coffee and like flavored coffee. So excited to try all of them. And then what was I saying? Anyway, that was my messy update of a day. Yeah. But no, oh, sorry. What I was trying to say was that it just feels good to like come back home and just do your usual home things so that like you feel at home, adjusted and calm because there were things you did before and things that were part of your daily life. And yeah, feels good. Yeah, now I'm gonna read a bit and I think I'm a bit jet lagged still. Let me tell you, like by 3 p.m., Today, I was just like dozing off in the car and that's really bad. Either I need to like upkeep my caffeine intake or like try and fix my sleep schedule now because I, I don't want to fuck up my sleep schedule, especially if I'm going to the East Coast. Well, I, I'm literally just going to fuck up my sleep schedule, but I'm trying to do the most and also be well adjusted while I'm here. That's the update.